Today we've got another incredible 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos home theater that features a massive 140 inch Stewart Studio Tech 130G4 screen, a JVC RS3000 projector, complete triad silver and gold speakers, dual clip subwoofers, JBL Synthesis SDP55 processor, two massive tone winner amplifiers, Zapiti player with NAS, and much, much more. In this video, we'll cover every component of this build as we discuss with Casey and Jody the how and the why behind their decisions. Now, before we get into the video, here's a word from today's sponsor, Zapiti. Zapiti offers some of the finest professional grade video management systems on the market today. Whether you have 100 or 1500 4K movies, Zapiti players and NAS devices make it incredibly easy to rip, store, and catalog your digital media in a beautifully laid out presentation with support for 4K, Dolby Vision, and HDR10+. Be sure to check out their website, zapiti.com. I'll have a link for it down in the description below. Well, Casey, thanks so much for inviting me into you and Jody's just incredibly beautiful home. No problem. You've got an awesome home theater here. And this has been something that you've been working on probably about the past two years. Yeah, yeah, it's been that way. We we started uh, we started uh, uh, thinking about everything that we wanted, uh, maybe about September of 2020. Yeah. Finally got a chance to uh, uh, put things into motion in October of last year. And uh, it's it's been a journey ever since. That's been awesome. And, and you and Jody came over to my home a couple years ago and you were like, hey, we just want to see kind of what your theater room looks like and maybe get some ideas and inspiration. Oh, yeah. And that's a huge reason why I make videos like this home theater tour, because I want to inspire you guys to do something like this in your own home um, space, whether it's in a bedroom or in a garage or in a dedicated theater room like we're in here. Oh, yeah. So Casey, let's go ahead and just start by what are the dimensions of your room? The dimensions of the room are 16 feet wide. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you can tell by the way that the, the back wall looks, half of it is 19 feet okay. deep and the other half is 20 feet. It's got like a little cutout yep. to it. It's got a little cutout to it. And that 19 foot space, that's where the door uh, the door is. So, sure. And then yeah. what, what's the height of your ceiling? The ceiling, uh, the ceiling height is eight feet, 8.5 okay. inches. Very cool. So he's got a, you've got a big room. I mean, compared to my theater room, mine's only 13 by 19. Yeah. And so I love the spaciousness in this room. So let's go ahead and start talking about the different components in your room. True. So let's start off with your screen. What do we have here? So the screen is a uh, 140 inch uh, Stewart one, Studio Tech uh, 130 G4. Okay. Mm -hmm. Has a 1.4 gain on it. Gotcha. So yep. 1.4 gain, that means that it's more reflective to yep. light. So it's going to give you a brighter image. Yep. And I love the image. And we're going to show you some video here of the picture quality, the image quality, and we'll talk about projector and everything as well. So one question that a lot of guys ask on my channel is, should I go with a 16 by nine screen or a wider format, like a 2.35 to one or two, 2.4 to one. Mm -hmm. So you have the wider scope screen. Why did you choose that? Because I think the wife and I really felt like we would only be, we would mainly be using this for movies. Yeah. And gotcha. most of the movies that we watch are going to be in a cinema scope sure. uh, ratio, yeah. one, of, one of the forms. So yeah. um, it really made better sense for us to just have this as a, as a this is a, a 2.3, um, 2.35 by one. Okay. So, um, yeah, it made sense for us to have a, a skin, cinema scope format. Yeah, just was better for us. And I think when when it comes down to you know if you're watching a lot of sports or mm -hmm. maybe you do a lot of gaming and those are typically going to be in a, a, a sixteen by nine 16 format, by nine. Yeah. that might be the better option. But I'm with you, man. Yeah. I love having that wider scope screen. Yeah. I love being able to see this. It's almost wall to wall here. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. And so we've got your screen here. It's got a mask or, or kind of like some board, velvet border around the, mm -hmm. uh, the edge and that just kind of any overbleed, it kind of washes that out. You'll never see it. No, definitely. Yeah. So let's go ahead and talk about one of the recent upgrades that you made to 
even in the past eight months, I've seen your theater like change and change and change. <laughs> For the past eight months, yeah. So you started off with the clip system and it sounded great. Mm -hmm. It's the reference premiere, but there were certain aspects of it that you just, you wanted to take it to the next level. And so kind of walk us through what we've got speaker wise and maybe some of the reasons why you chose them and even some of the steps that you took to go hear some of these. Well, I think first and foremost, we started off we, we put a lot of money in, into the video. So when we first started, because Jody and I are video files yeah. for sure. Yeah. So when we first started, looking at the picture was just like, <gasps> and then, um, you know, while all of this is going on, obviously COVID yeah. is, is, you know, we're in the middle of COVID. Sure. So we're not able to listen to a lot, get a lot of different uh, demos mm -hmm. of home theater rooms. Sure. But what we did see, we could definitely sit here and go, mm, we could do better than this. Gotcha. I mean, we got some really good video in here. We need some better audio. Yeah. And I really wanted to get it to a showroom level. Cool. Um, we both did. Well, so, you definitely achieved that. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> so um, we set out to, to, to do better. So, you know, um, we got a lot of good, knowledgeable hands uh, to 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 um, give us ideas mm -hmm. and designs yeah. in this room, and I think it really it really uh, it, it it really benefited us. So um, what do we have like LCR up here? What are we working with? So the LCRs now are uh, triad goals okay. uh, in rooms. I got you. Um, phenomenal. Yeah. I, d I don't even really know what else yeah. to say about them. Um, phenomenal. The funny thing is. Uh, Jody and I were just watching uh, Doctor Strange, yeah, uh, and we, we, you know, we went to a uh, Dolby Cinema, mm -hmm. and when we were done, we were sitting back, and we were like, "Yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. That was it's, fun. It was good. It was fun. Yeah, but we could have watched this in the room. Yeah, it would have sounded just as good. Yeah. So um, these are phenomenal. Um, the the amount of clarity that comes uh, with these. Uh, being able to hear so many different things that we weren't able being we weren't able to hear before, mm. um, it feels like it feels like two things that I would say is um, number one, you never know where the speakers are. Yeah, like they they. Yeah, they I totally disappear. understand that term. The speakers melt yeah. into your into your room. Yeah. You never know where these speakers are, and and sometimes you just don't know where the sounds coming from. Right. And the other thing is, they're so comfortable. Hmm. The, the 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 quality of sound that comes out of them yeah. is so comfortable. It just feels like you always have headphones on. Hmm. That's that it's night and day from what what the Clips RPs yeah. sounded like. So um, for the LCRs, I got to say that is the number one difference. Yeah. And it, it we 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 couldn't have asked for anything better. Yeah, so. I know when I, I came over. Maybe, I guess about, well, when you first kind of built the theater room, you had mm -hmm. me come over and we demoed and, and your system sounded great. I enjoyed it because I've mm -hmm. always enjoyed clips. And you had asked me, you said, Michael, now be upfront, be honest with me. Like, if there's anything that could be improved, what do you think it would be? And what did I tell you? Center channel. It was a center channel. Yeah. I mean, not that it's a bad center channel, but at times it's just, it was a little difficult to kind of yes. understand the dialogue. Totally. And so this was a massive difference in, <laughs> oh, massive from the other one. And so I think, yeah. and that that's so crucial when you're building out a home theater, you want to make sure that those front three speakers are really quality, is kind mm -hmm. of as best as you can get in your budget, yeah. because that's where all of your sound is coming from. Everything that happens yeah. on screen, that's coming out of these speakers and yeah. especially the center channel. And so don't skimp on the center yeah. channel, but I love the way that these sound. And the great thing about these two, and, and you shared this with me earlier, is that um, Jody can sit here and listen to long, long periods oh, yeah. of time where before she didn't even realize it, but they were a little fatiguing with mm -hmm. the clip speakers. Yeah. Yeah. And clips isn't for everybody. They're definitely more of a brighter sounding speaker. Um, these, not that they're laid back because they're very detailed. But they, I think they just don't have that top end that's so kind of pointy. Yeah. I, it's hard for me to explain. I mean, I am not a, uh, I am, uh, I am not an audiophile, mm -hmm. and so the 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 
the the wording and and, and the techniques sure. that, that are used to create speakers yeah i'm not right. i'm not familiar with yeah the best thing i could say is what it felt like to us yeah. and the difference really was that with the lcrs in general with the the, the changing of the lcrs in general is yeah. just when we're sitting here it felt like the speakers were screaming at us mm. when they were okay. clips speakers gotcha. all right and with these you don't feel that yeah. at all like yeah. the level of comfort that yeah. comes from these three speakers like i can talk differently about all the speakers in this room but the one thing that i will definitely say about these is the level of comfort because the center channel was a, a, a was a night and day difference mm -hmm. between the 504c the clips 504c and sure. this. that that was yeah. i could give a lot of different yeah. uh, I, I could give a lot of 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 differences in comparison with that but the lrs they weren't that different yeah. there was not a night and day change yeah. but what was was the comfort that, that came system, with yeah. yeah the the comfort that came with them. it yeah. just it just sounded like comf like just comfort. Yeah, it just yeah. like pillows are just on your ears. Yeah. Just, this is great. It's a good this feeling when good. you get it yeah. dialed in and you're really, really enjoying your setup. Yeah. And I know you enjoy your setup because I've seen the smile on your face. I've seen the smile on Jody's face. It has put a huge smile on Youth Man's face. So I've been enjoying <laughs> it myself. Yeah. So we didn't even talk about how many speakers, like what's the layout of your speakers? You've got how many on the bed layer, mm -hmm. Atmos speakers, and then subwoofers. So currently it's a 7.1.4 okay. setup. Um, the floor plan is set for uh, 9.1.6. Okay, um, so adding some more yeah. Atmos speakers, mm -hmm. maybe front wides, I'm front guessing. Wides. Okay, mm -hmm. very um, cool. So we're still, we're still uh, figuring out when we're going to do that. Okay. I just haven't decided to do it yet. Right yeah. now, we're just so in love. Right now, you're just enjoying yeah, it, man. It's just, we're That's just, what I love. We're cloud nine in right now. I love so, it. I love it. So yeah. many times we chase after the next thing, and we don't enjoy what we have right now. I think that's really I think really you're been, in a great spot. Yeah. You're enjoying what you have. That's really been the best part about our journey, yeah. is that we, we upgraded things in a manner and in a time frame where we really got to analyze what we had at the moment mm. and then be able to compare what it sounded like because we both intimately listen to this and go yeah. we need to change this mm. or this needs to be a little bit better yeah. or you know so just every aspect of it sure. and the enjoyment has come from really all the audio changes that we made in this room we've both agreed that Though it was expensive, yeah, it was money well it's spent. It. Yeah. yeah, it was money well spent because yeah. we're both again, we both love to watch movies. So. Absolutely, and that's a big Thank part you. of your life and your family's life. Yeah. So we've got the Triad Golds up front. Mm -hmm. um, let's go ahead and move to the sides and the rears, and then we'll talk Atmos. But I'm going to step aside. I want to bring Jody in because she was a huge uh, part of, yeah. especially your side surrounds. Totally. Okay, so uh, I'm here with my lovely wife Jody. Hi, everyone. All right, and um, we wanted to go over what our uh, the rest of our speaker setup is. So we're gonna start here with um, our uh, silver LCR triad uh, speakers. Um, I wanted to bring Jody in because you built this cabinet. Correct, I designed and built it. Yeah. Um, my husband told me exactly what he needed yeah. and what uh, he desired, and I said we can build something because uh, we could put it in one wall, but we couldn't put it in the other wall. Yeah. So in order to have, uh, what's the word? Have them have, have them ide in identical places. Yeah, so yep. in order to have co cohesivity, what? <laughs> <laughs> cohesiveness. Yeah. In order to have some cohesiveness, um, we basically, um, I said, let's build a, a kind of shelf that we can put it on. Mm -hmm. And I built these these from scratch, mm -hmm. um, and then I wrapped them in velvet because I wanted them to disappear just like everything else, and it worked out perfectly. Yeah, it, it really did. Um, these are my favorite speakers in the room. They are. I, I absolutely love them. Um, 
compared to what we originally had, what do you think about them? Well, listening to the previous speakers we had, it was kind of a little harsher on my ears. Everyone else was fine with it. Um, I guess I'm a little bit sensitive, um, but these are perfect. It, and the quality and the clarity it is just so much, it's, it's such an upgrade compared to what we had before. Yeah. I, I definitely enjoy these speakers a lot yeah. more. It, it makes me enjoy the whole room even more. Yeah. Once upon a time, he would say, hey, you want to watch a movie? And I go, oh, not tonight. It just depends on how I felt that night. Now he goes, let's watch a movie. And I'll be, okay, I'll be there in an hour. So yeah. we, yeah. we yeah. have a lot more movie nights, which is really great. Because I really wanted to be able to enjoy this room as much as he did. Yeah. His speakers were definitely a great upgrade. Yeah. These speakers for me, um, the biggest thing about them for me is just how much more sound, how much more definition you get from them. Um, I hear stuff that I just never heard before. And even before we put the panels up, once we uh, laid these down and, uh, uh, well, once we put them up on the wall, once you mounted them up on the wall, I did like nothing. Let me just be clear about this. The most I did was hand her stuff. She did all of this. Um, once these were up and we started testing them, I can remember some of the first uh, demos that we tried. And both of us were just sitting here like, did you hear that? I didn't yeah. hear that before. Yes. Let's rewind, rewind that. Rewind, yes. Let's, let's, let's do that again. We did a lot of that. <laughs> um, yeah, we did a lot of that. So these are definitely my favorite speakers in the house, but I don't have to keep saying that. That's just, that's it. But thank you, babe. No problem, honey. <laughs> All right. So next up are the rears. Yes. Um, so the rears are also uh, triad silver. LCRs, but they're in rooms, not like the uh, in walls that we had on the side. Um, originally, the uh, speakers were down quite a bit more, maybe about uh, 12 inches more, um, but we couldn't actually hear them very well in these seats. One of the things that we'll talk about later is, is the, the floor plan that I had designed um, by Steve Smith. And one of the things that, that Steve recommended was that we bring the speakers up a little bit more. Um, so we replaced, uh, we replaced, uh, I think, what were they, 600 M's by yeah, Clips? I don't remember. I think it was. Uh, I think it was 600 M's uh, with, with these silver LCRs. Um, so the entire bed layer is either is gold LCRs in the front and then silver LCRs for the rest of the speakers. Um, what do you think about the, uh, the, the rear, the rear surrounds? Well, the rears were definitely, uh, a, a change. Um, it, it really changed how we watched movies and he heard sound from the movies because mm -hmm. there were things that we were missing before. And then when we went back and saw that the, the movie again, or saw that clip again, it was like, wait, what was that? Wait, what was that? And I kept on doing that. I remember the first time I was like, "Wait, what was that? Who, who's in? The, who came in the room?" Or you yes, know, it was, it was a lot of noise. Not a lot of noise. A lot of sound that we were missing. Yeah. So it was great to yeah. actually now hear everything that's going around yeah. in the movie. Yeah, I would. I would. You. You said it best because the the one way that I know that we're getting sound that we weren't getting before is that now and you'll see it if you're sitting in here with me every once in a while i go oh that was the speakers <laughs> because i'm hearing stuff that previously we wouldn't have heard and um i love these silver lcrs you know the funny thing was we were not going to choose silver lcrs for the surround bed layer um, my good friend, Matt Blair from Brolic Media, he said to me, you need to change these to silver. What The plan that I had originally, he was like, change these to silver LCRs. And I'm like, Matt, that seems like overkill. And he's like, nah, no, it's not. And I went with his suggestion, and I'm so glad that we went with his suggestion. It's... 
these bring out so much sound that we just didn't have before. And the separation in sound is just perfect. It's, 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 couldn't ask for anything more. So next up is Atmos. Um, major difference. <sighs> major difference. I, I don't really know. It's probably one of the reasons why we haven't added the middle row of Atmos speakers yet is because we're still getting over how different it sounds from what we had. Um, quality, quality, quality. Yeah. Yeah, um, the, what we have in here right now are Triad uh, Silver Sat 9s. Um, so, and I'm sure you'll, you'll probably show, show what this looks like, but they're huge. Um, even though they're, 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 I think they're six inch speakers, right? They're six inches? They're, I don't remember, but they, the box. That... The box is massive. Yeah. yeah, I think they're just six inch speakers, but you can... They rotate, and they have a, a, a laser on them, so you can pretty much pinpoint the tweeter for exactly where your main listening position is. So when we first decided to go with these, uh, again, like I said, the, our floor plan is done by Steve Smith. One of the big conversations we were having was where these were supposed to be positioned compared to where our original Atmos speakers were. And so we brought them in, quite a bit more um, and push them out a little bit more. And I just don't even, this is probably the, 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 the one place where audio is night and day difference. Um, and I definitely was, wasn't sold on this. Um, one of our big issues with doing the audio upgrade was that we didn't get to listen to, we didn't get the demo a lot of the equipment that we purchased. And um, luckily, uh, we got the experience and opinions from some really good guys, you know, Steve Smith, Matt Blair, Zach Fowley um, over at AZ Tuning. Um, and they really gave us some better direction on what to choose. These were just... I can tell you I was hesitant to buy them. She was hesitant to sign off on it because we hadn't uh, heard them and it was such a big cost difference from what we originally had. And I can remember <laughs> the first time we played them, we immediately just looked at, you, at each other like this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, maybe... Maybe I did something wrong. Like this is this is wow. It was phenomenal. They sound. They bring out so much definition, and they're loud and they're clear. They're crisp, and anything that's coming from them, you can't even tell that they're necessarily coming from the seal. It's just like a a crazy bubble effect when everything is on. Um, you want to add anything extra to it, or I, I wouldn't even describe them as loud. They are clear. Mm -hmm. um, the quality of those speakers are just, you know, phenomenal compared to what we had before. Mm -hmm. um, I remember hearing the helicopters fly above our heads, and it was kind of like before it was just everywhere. You, you know, and I don't mean everywhere in a good way. I mean everywhere, like you don't. It was kind of like, okay. You can't tell the direction. Right, there's no direction anywhere. You could just chalk it up to, oh my gosh, this is just coming at you anytime. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as we got these in, the helicopter, <laughs> and we were just kind of like, okay, <laughs> wow. Yeah. That was good, you know, yep. just like the surround sounds. I mean, the surround sound in this room just with the upgrades of the speakers, just it was just phenomenal. Yeah. It was like, you're looking every direction, like, oh my gosh, oh, okay. Once yeah. again, looking up, what's that noise? I didn't yeah. hear that before. Yeah. And with every movie that we watched before, every clip we watched before, and we put these in, we're kind of like, wow, yeah, this is great. Yeah. This yeah. is great. Agreed.
Agreed, we love them. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the projector. Arguably, probably your favorite piece of equipment in this house. Definitely. This is a uh, JVC RS3000, the NX9. Um, and we have a uh, Paladin DCR lens on it. Uh, the wife mounted this herself. <laughs> I sat there and handed her tools and helped her hold it up. But uh, yeah, she did that all herself. And this was a trial too, because we could not find that stud yep. for anything to put this, this up. But we, we ended up getting it done. Thank you very much, babe. You're welcome. Um, the NX-9, why did we go with the NX-9? Well, we looked at um, somebody's room and they had it, they had one. Sterling's room. Sterling's yeah. room. Yeah. Yep, Sterling. Shout I, out to Sterling. Thank you. Yes. He had, um, he put on a couple of movies and I remember saying to Kay, I like that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Kay was like, well, let's talk about budget. And I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> hurt my heart, but... Um, it was worth the investment. I'm definitely, when it comes to color and uh, quality, picture quality, I'm mm -hmm. definitely the one. Like, he'll be more on the sound side most times, but I'm I think I'm definitely yeah. the picture quality person because yeah. when it came to even televisions, we would go, he would say, baby, I want this television. And I would do research and then we would go to the store and I go, nope, we're getting this one. And he goes, but that's way more. And I said, but this is the one it that looks has better, better quality. Yeah. So yeah. I'm definitely, when it comes to visual, yeah. I, I'm, I'm that person. Yeah. So. Shout out to, Ke uh, to Kellen from uh, Dream Home Media. Um, I remember when I was first getting, trying to get this, uh, he was telling me to get the NX-7. And I said, no, you don't know my wife. <laughs> so we're, we're getting this one right here. Um, so yeah, this, this ended up being amazing. Um, I think the only thing to us that made it look even better was the DCR lens. Yeah. For those that don't know, uh, Paladin DCR lens, what that'll do for, well, you only need it really if you uh, are using a CinemaScope uh, screen. If you're using a CinemaScope screen and you're not using the lens, you're zooming out uh, to fit everything onto the screen. And so those black sections on the top and on the bottom are still being used, but you're not, you're not seeing those on the screen. So you're losing uh, pixels. Um, what the Paladin lens will do, what the DCR lens will do is it will bring those, bring all of that pixelization that you lost back into the image in, on the screen. So, um, I, and it also, depending on what publication and who you're talking to, uh, it'll add more brightness to, to, the, um, to the image, somewhere between 20 to 30%. Um, I think we can confirm both of those that it, it, it works great. I think one of, the, one of the things that made me know for sure that brightness had been uh, enhanced was when we did this and when we when we installed this and we watched uh, Endgame. Yeah. Remember the scene where the lightning's coming down when um when Cap is hitting Thanos uh, with the lightning. That lightning, it was just totally different lightning. It was like it was blue. It was it was saturated. It was bright. Uh, also, I think it was uh, when I think the next day after I installed it. We watched uh, one of your favorites, Blade Runner 2049. Yes. And you sat in here. And I was glued. It was like watching yeah. another movie all over again. Yeah. And it was the, the it, it did improve the brightness so much because that is very much a very dark movie in a mm -hmm. way. And I was just seeing more colors and more um, shades that I wasn't seeing before. Mm -hmm. I was kind of like, wow. Yeah. yeah, this this makes a difference. Yeah, and the clarity was 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 definitely enhanced yeah. as well. Um, everything that we've watched uh, since then, um, that we had watched prior to installing the lens, it was like, ooh, this is now this is crispy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I. It was a major investment, 
but definitely well worth it. Well worth it. Well worth it. Pockets aren't happy, <laughs> but we are. Well, Casey, I love hearing how much you and Jody love and appreciate all the time and investment that you've put into this room and you're really enjoying where you're at. That's a great place to be. Thanks. One area that I really appreciate that you've added to your room is acoustic treatment. And I think a lot of people, even myself included, and you as well, this was kind of like a last <laughs> step. So when really, now that we've added that, did it make a huge difference in your room? So firstly, this was the last thing that got put in the room. Right. Um, this is one of the things in this build where, and I did, honestly, there were a lot of things that pros told me that I didn't listen to. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a lot, it was a lot. Sure. A lot, of, a lot of stuff we had to do backwards. Mm -hmm. um, this is the one thing out of all of those yeah that I wish I would have listened to. Yeah. If I could go back in time, these would have been the first thing I purchased. Yeah. They made that much of a difference in this room. Even after the the the, the triads mm -hmm. were in the room. Sure. Sounded great. Right. Sounds Sounded a whole lot great. Better, yeah. And I think the joy for Jody and I was the fact that we we didn't know that you could go any further mm -hmm. in quality. Yeah. So um, we're just kind of like, I mean, how much better could yeah. it sound? And then we put these up, and it was insanely yeah. better. Sure. And when I say better, like a lot of people will say, oh, yeah, it sounded better, but how did it sound better? Yeah. Here's how it sounded better. Every sound that's coming out of your speaker is just that much more clear. Hmm. Every sound, especially vocals, yeah. they are clean. There's no like, there's no delay. It's just, you hear them. It, it doesn't sound like they're coming from speakers. Mm. It sounds like you are in front of them talking. Yeah. It, it just, it's amazing how much cleaner the sounds every from every angle, sure. from every speaker, sound in this room because of all of these panels. Well, you yeah. gotta realize you've got 11 speakers in here that are producing sound. Mm -hmm. That sound is hitting the back wall and side wall yeah. and reflecting off the ceiling yeah. and they're colliding continually. Yeah. And you're hearing some sound directly and some sound that's reflected yeah. and your brain just kind of gets confused. Like, what did I just hear? It's yeah. not real clear. Yeah. And so we'll talk about the brand that you chose, but. I don't think that's even as important as just adding acoustic yeah, treatment. Just having them Whether in general. Whether it's DIY, building your own, or buying some like from GIK or mm -hmm. ATS, there's a bunch of different companies, but I, I want to urge you, Casey from experience wants to urge you, make sure you put this in the budget. It is 100% worth it yeah. because it's going to clean up, especially in that area of dialogue yeah. and then that just directionality that you get from your setup. I can tell you this, I now that they're, and again, foolishly, they were the last things to come yeah. in this room. Yeah. I really wish I had these when I had the previous speakers so that I can see just how much different this room would have been right. at that time. Gotcha. Um, th it's the one thing by far that if I knew what I know now, yeah. I w they would have been the first thing purchased. Sure. So let's talk a little bit because you've got different styles and different ones. Mm -hmm. So we've got some up front. So these are absorption. So this mm -hmm. is all from a company, GIK. This is from the, yep. These same, are all GIK panels. Same brand that I've got. And mm -hmm. the cool thing with GIK is that you can kind of stylize them. And I like that. Mm -hmm. You can pick the pattern of the wood. These are combo panels. Yes, these are so combos. They'll mm -hmm. absorb some of the sound, but then they'll also reflect some of the sound. Yep. And so you chose the vertical, uh, um, I guess vertical, vertical lines. pattern. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what they call that. I chose the horizontal, and then they've got yep. some other patterns as well. And then a couple of them up front, you've got just absorption. So you want to stop Correct. the sound there. Correct. And so adding a variety of that in your room, and I know there's a science to it, and I'm not the science guy. I didn't know oh. exactly where to place them. Listen, Steve Smith designed 
uh, the plant, the panel placement. So he and, was able to tell you exactly yes, where he, he was. Cool. And I, in the beginning, I was just like, Steve, is that big of a deal? Yeah. He's like, you don't it's know till you know. Yeah. It's that big of a deal. Sure. And so I placed, originally, I placed just the combo panels up. Okay. Um, and didn't really work with the place with the areas that he uh, that he um, labeled as absorption areas. Gotcha. And so once I did all of them, it was just like, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so we've got we've got some acoustic treatment on the left wall and the right wall. Yep. You've got a couple on the rear wall as yep. well. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned eventually you want like a future upgrade. Oh yeah. Are you want to do more. some on where? Totally want to add more. Uh, more to the rear wall. Okay. Um, uh, maybe about two on the ceiling. Okay. Uh, and those are like called cloud, um, because they kind of like yeah. float mm -hmm. on the ceiling. And the um. What are the ones? Uh, the the base traps. Okay, so, so some corner traps. Yep. Yeah. So two of them in the front, and then two of them in the back. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, I definitely do. I'm just gonna fit it in the budget throughout the year. <laughs> well, the good thing is adding. Look at it. I found that I found this out even in my room. Even having, I only had, I think five originally. I had three on one wall, two on the mm -hmm. other wall. Made a big difference. Mm -hmm. Then I added more. Made a difference. Yep. So even if you have to start small mm -hmm. and put some, at least start with the first reflection points. Yep. And you can Google on how to figure out where that's at. It's real easy using the mirror technique. But you can figure out, okay, where do I need to absorb yep. that sound? Start off with those as budget allows or as you're able to build more. If you're wanting yep. to go the DIY route and save a lot of money, mm -hmm. then you can continue to add more to the yep. sides then add some to the back and then later add some to the ceiling. So the good thing with home theater and building a home theater, it doesn't mm -hmm. always have to like be done all at once. Absolutely. It's a process, man, and I love that. And the one thing that I would say is this, when I first started putting them up, I only put, so we have, I think 14 panels up right now. Mm -hmm. When we first started putting them up, I had only put up four. Yeah. And the, the, the sound difference wasn't that noticeable. Yeah. Um, I was still waiting on more of them sure. to get here. Um, so to that, anybody who's just buying a few at a time, even if you don't hear a big difference, yeah. trust, sure. have faith in yeah, the process. Yeah, yeah. Because when they all get up, yeah. oof, oof, yeah. major yeah. difference. It's a good deal, man. Yeah. Definitely worth the investment. Yeah. So Casey, one of my favorite aspects of a home theater are subwoofers. So tell us what you've got going on up here in the front. So I have a pair of Klipsch SPL uh, 150 sure. SWs. Yep. yep. 15 inch sub. Yep. 15 inch sub. Um, I like them. Yeah. I like them. Yeah. Um, I'm always worried uh, about the LFE in this room. Okay. Because right under this room is my kitchen. Yeah. And, um, you know, Jody and I have watched home theater. Uh, videos on YouTube where you know the guys have like 10 subs yep. and the whole house is shaking sure. yeah. it's a brand new house we're yeah. not doing that yeah. we don't want to destroy the house that's yeah, not the we goal we don't want here. to destroy the house yeah. so something that can give us some good vibration in here um, it's fine yeah. and so the journey with these at the moment is they're they're getting ready to be replaced with another uh, upgrades coming yep another yeah. upgrade is coming but um the prompt for it was, uh, I think it was about three weeks ago, uh, Aaron and Zach uh, from AZ Tuning mm -hmm. tuned this room, calibrated right. this room. Sure. And one of the big things they did was calibrate this room through the through my mini DSP. Right. So that hadn't been done before. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of extra vibration going on in this room right. um, uh, that is no longer here because, because now the LFE channel's fine-tuned sure. so to speak so um because of that i can definitely tell now more than before their performance issues okay so with that being the case um i'm replacing them with uh full marty uh 18 inch uh, yeah. subwoofers so we're going from dual 15s to dual 18s, 18s. and a yeah. much bigger cabinet yes so, so they're going to fill up yeah. the space yeah. on both of those sides. So. Yeah, volume matters when it comes to subwoofer as far as cabinet yeah. volume. Yeah. So though I've experienced yeah. both Marty's and the Marty Minis. Mm -hmm. 
Dude, if you like what you're experiencing now, I mean, I like these. I think they're great, mm -hmm. um, especially for the, the price point that these are at. Yeah. The good thing is, I believe, is your, this is on the second floor. It's on the second floor. So there's like wood yeah. kind of here. Yeah. So the interesting a... thing is, is that because of the floor, you get the vibration coming through the flooring, mm -hmm. vibrating the chairs. At times, it feels like you have butt kickers, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. or tactile transducers, yeah. which is really, really cool. So you've got something like these wouldn't perform as well in my theater room because yeah. I've got concrete floor. Yep. You know, but because you're getting that tactile response. Yeah. But I'm excited for you, man. Yeah, the Marty's are going to take your subwoofer and that LFE and that tactile base yeah. to a whole new level, man. Yeah. They're going to be rad. I'm yeah. excited for you. It's definitely going to be fun. So those one, are coming next week, right? They'll be here on Wednesday. Nice. Um, and this is, a, you know, one of the other good things. It's, it's funny. So my good friend, uh, Terrence Miller. Shout out to Terrence. Um, he's always the person encouraging me to do upgrades. Mm -hmm. And once I finish with the panels, I'll never forget the phone call I got from him. He goes, so you know you got to do your subs now, yeah. right? And it was before I even said anything about what they sounded like after the tuning. Yeah. Which, to, to be fair, um, Aaron and Zach told me before the tuning even happened, they said, these are not going to sound the same. Yeah. Because now we're now we're making them sound how they're supposed yeah. to sound. So before I even even started to say it out loud, he calls me and goes, "You know it's time to change those subs, right?" Yeah. I say, "Yeah, I know." You know, it's always easier to spend <laughs> somebody else's money than your own. Yeah, money, right. Exactly. But the, you know what? The point that I was getting ready to come to was when I looked. And I started to search for sub replacements, mm -hmm. and um, when I saw what it took to do the DIY subs, yeah. I thought that it would be a really cool project for Jody and I to sure. do, because we've done so much with this room and right. enjoyed the time that we spent together doing it. Sure. I'm like, you know what? This is going to be That'd fun. Be a cool project. Yeah. This is going to be fun. And so. the good thing, the flat packs, they come pre-cut. So yes. you're not going to have to cut mm -hmm. each individual piece. You just have to assemble them, glue yep. them, screw glue them, clamp them, them, clamp them, do all yep. that stuff, and then and then finish them if you want to finish them yep. with whatever you want it to, to look like. Yep. And um, so that's going to be an awesome project. So I, I yeah. you know, of course, I'm local, so I'll be coming back over. Yeah. I want to check them yeah, out. Definitely. And uh, another thing, kind of while we're here looking at the front, you've done a lot with velvet, and one thing oh, I found blood, out. Yeah is once you go with a little bit of velvet, that grows exponentially. <laughs> and so I'm seeing velvet on subwoofers. Yes. I'm seeing velvet on the top of your center channel. Yes. We've got velvet on, on the, the ceiling. ceiling. There's probably, what, six foot? It's about, Maybe a little yeah, more? It's about eight feet. Eight feet of, yep. of velvet here. Yeah. And so what's the reason? You've got velvet on the curtains, on or the at curtains. least really, really yep. dark curtains. Nope, black velvet curtains. What's the point of using velvet? The absorption of light reflection. Yeah. This, oh man. Again, having these are like having panels for audio. Yeah. It's like when you know mm -hmm. what they do for yeah. your for your picture quality, yeah. it, it changes everything. So I'll tell you a quick story. We had, um, Jody had purchased the, uh, the curtains. Okay. And... I was like, ah, I don't put the curtains up yet. And then she came in one day and she's like, I'm not listening to you. I'm putting up the curtains. And I was like, okay, fine, put up the curtains. She puts up the curtains. And we, I don't remember exactly what movie we were watching, but it was a dark space setting okay. that was happening yeah. on the screen at the sure. time. And again, once again, we looked at each other like, and the first thing that came out of our mouth was, she turned up and looked at the projector and said, did you change that projector? Mm, did you buy something else? Yeah. I was like, I didn't buy anything. Yeah. She's like, this looks way better. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, it really does. And you could, at that point, we knew how much light was being reflected, mm -hmm. hitting the walls. And it's and we, spilling back onto and your spilling image. back onto your yeah. image. Because all the colors just looked phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And the blacks... You know, RS three thousand has yeah, already got, got nice an blacks. amazing blacks 100%. already. Yeah. But once we did that, yeah. it was just like, yeah. okay, it's it. We 
we so then we we from the curtains it went to put them on the speakers sure and it was an immediate difference and then after the curtain i mean after the speaker uh the black velvet on the speakers mm -hmm. It was uh, get this carpet. Sure, um, putting some black carpet yeah. up here again. Yeah, and there's probably two reasons that it. I never realized you could have light reflecting off a carpet, but if yeah. it's light but enough, it does happen. It's going to reflect some. Yep. But the other reason is by having this dark area up here, when lights go out, you're just totally zoned in. You're immersed yes. into the visual appeal yes. of it. Yes. And so you're not distracted by these things that are reflecting the yes. light. And it, so there's the cool multi-purpose yeah, exactly. for doing that. The cool thing is that you get this floating screen effect because this area looks totally black. Yeah. And I can remember when I first uh, was getting everything set up, people would tell me, yeah, hey, you're going to see the speakers. And I'm like, dude, I don't see these speakers at all. Yeah, they just you were in here in. for three hours yeah. a day. You don't see the speakers yeah. at all. And, and to their... Um, just to let you know, they lead the grills on all these. Yes. I have them take them off just so you can see them. Because yeah. if you put the grills on, they like disappear. Yeah. So I like being able to see them. But during the movies, grills are on. This whole front stage just it's, goes black. It's and totally all black. you see is this yeah. massive image. So the last thing that we did was the ceiling. Yeah. And it was the hardest one yeah, to do that's for a chore. sure. Yeah, yeah, that, sure. Was, that was tough. But yeah. uh, not only was it tough to put them up there, but it was tough to even get mm -hmm. this much triple black velvet gotcha but um you know we did a lot of shopping around we did sure. a lot of waiting we finally got enough and put them up in two rows and again it's not the great it's not the 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 greatest setup but yeah. man when the lights are out yeah. you do not see anything here it's just yeah. an abyss yeah. in this whole area 100 percent. So, and you'll see it. like imperfections because i've got lighting up there but without this lighting, you've got regular can light shining down that whole ceiling. It's yeah. hard to find your speakers. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, can't when see looking them up at there because the lights are yeah. blinding you. Yeah. So by adding that, again, you probably can't do this in a living room setup. True. Although I have seen some guys do that. But if you've got a dedicated space, again, this is something pretty inexpensive that you can mm -hmm. do to take your theater room experience to the next level. Yeah. It will really change the colors hitting the screen yeah it'll totally change them absolutely yeah. okay so let's talk about your equipment in this adjacent room over here sure all right so now we get to see really my favorite part of the house <laughs> is this rack um this rack holds all the uh home automation and the networking equipment and the home theater equipment all together um at the top we have the uh, Luma camera system that uh, holds all the security cameras uh, in the house. Um, here is the networking equipment area. So this is a, a Arachnus router. There's a switch behind here that you can't see. And then there's another switch here. We have about 35 runs going all through the house between all the rooms uh, and some spots outside. So uh, yeah. Uh, Next after that is the home automation system. We're using Control 4. Um, after that, we have uh, a little shelf here that has my uh, NVIDIA Shield Pro, uh, the bridge for the Hue lights, and the bridge for Lutron uh, switches. Uh, under that, we have the players, uh, one uh, UB420 which doesn't get a lot of run, but it's there just in case we need a backup. And uh, the main player is my uh, Zipidi uh, 4K uh, Pro HDR player. This is really what, what powers this room and then also the lounge as well. We pretty much play everything on there. Now, this doesn't actually have any discs in it. Um, what I'm using instead is the Zipidi NAS um, the Zipidi NAS has about uh, 80 terabytes of uh, disk space in it, all in RAID 5 um, for redundancy. And uh, also it has a, uh, a disk burner in it. So the way the Zipidi NAS works is you can just come in with your regular, zip, your regular disk, put it in here, and it will automatically burn it and put it on one of these disks for you. All right. It's really simple. Um, they don't sell it in the States anymore, but uh, anybody that's outside of the States, if you want the convenience of just, you know, just pop it in 
and and rip there you go i've put most pretty much most of my uh my physical media in here already except for maybe one or two uh series which i would rather make uh mkv files of um because the zapiti player makes isos so i rather make mkvs for the um for the series so that i have individual episodes uh marked so i'm gonna do that but everything else is sitting right in here and this baby's not failed me so i'm very happy with it um all right so next up is the uh jbl sdp 55 uh processor sdp excuse me 55 processor um i love this thing i, I do direct live uh has literally changed this room um everything all the sounds are just so perfectly separated uh i love it I, I don't have anything bad to say about it uh even when it's uh even when it's movies that are not uh you know atmos or dtsx it's upscaling is amazing um i've loved every minute of this processor um, under that is uh, two tone winner uh, amps. Um, a lot of, there's not a lot of uh, talk about these uh, in our community, but I got to tell you, they're winners for sure. Um, these things have not failed me at all, and they honestly don't even feel like they're breaking a sweat with my with my uh, speakers. I have one uh, video on my IG page where. I'm playing uh, Dune, the, the sand crawler scene, and uh, it, you can see from my SPL meter that I'm well in the hundred, uh, you know, well over a hundred dB. Uh, that's how loud it was in this room, and that whole time, this meter wasn't past that negative three. I mean, it's these things are very, very strong. Um, so I have the top one that's running by three LCRs and one of my side surrounds. And the rest of the speakers are on that bottom one. Um, and then under that would be my uh, triad amp and, and uh, audio matrix. Those uh, power the uh, speakers that are all around my house. Um, we, have a, we have speakers pretty much in every room in the house. Um, so that powers that. And then under that is a uh, watt box battery backup. All right, so... The last piece we have to talk about is the seats. Yes. All right. These are uh, Seatcraft Serenity seats. Uh, they're tiered, so this uh, row is lower than the back row. The back row comes up maybe about eight inches, I think. Um, they are uh, on risers. I mean, self risers. Yep, yeah. they're on self risers. Yeah. Um, we love these seats. I yeah. mean, we really do. Um, the reclining is nice. It's not loud. Uh, they've got USB. Uh, they've got uh, USB ports on them, so we can charge our phones while we're uh, while we're watching movies. Um, the uh, what else is good about these? Um, they have these tables. Yeah, these trays. All of the seats have trays. Um, and they have this little storage place. Oh that yeah, you can the storage have, place. Like yeah. little things here and there, yeah. so it's really great. Mm -hmm. And um, we pick these seats, of course, and you know they're, you know, automatic, up and down. Um, these were a compromise for us though, because they were. we could not get the seats that we actually wanted. Because, uh, well, we could have, but we, we didn't want to wait. wait it. Yeah. We didn't want to wait anymore. Mm -hmm. We were kind of like, we want the seats now. We wanted yeah. to be the movie. Uh, theater experience for us now yeah. so that was our thing but this was a great compromise it, yeah. they're excellent they work well for us they work well for our family and you know considering what we were looking at we were looking at different patterns and we said going forward if we ever change these out mm -hmm. we'll get the ones that we really want yeah. but um these were great. These are great yeah. considering we yeah. have our family and they can watch movies and we can kick up our feet and we have a USB to charge our phones and we have a table here for our, you know, popcorn yeah. and, mm -hmm. you know, drink. And if we just have our drink, we just take these out 
and we just put our drink in the cup holder or, you know, a little napkin, you know, stuff like that. So, um, but I think these are absolutely um, fabulous for our room and yeah. functional. I mean, the one thing is we thought, oh, we want this design and that design and we want lights under the seats and stuff like that. But for us, we found it wasn't necessary. Yeah, I think functional is good enough. Yeah. It's not really, you know. Flashy, but yeah. um, we picked these because, like I said, the ones we did want weren't available. We mm -hmm. had to wait a while for them because of, you know, constraints with COVID. Well, Casey, you and Jody have done an absolute phenomenal job on this home theater, man. It's been really cool, literally, personally, watching you go through this journey over the past eight mm -hmm. months and talking with you online and on the phone and even yeah. being in your home several times just in the different stages. And, and one thing I've always tried to encourage you guys is just enjoy the journey of building a home theater. Um, whether you've got a dedicated space like you have mm -hmm. or whether you do this in a bedroom or in a garage or an attic, not an attic, but like a bonus room, mm -hmm. or, you know, wherever you have the space, make it happen if you're into home theater. And y'all have just done a great, great job. And I think there's so much that you guys can take from this whether it's just seeing, you know, this space and trying to visualize that in your home, or maybe they like what you've done with the velvet mm -hmm. or how you've set up your rack or the seating, whatever. I just want to make sure that we provide some value to you that are watching the videos. Um, and we've got many more of these coming up in the next couple of weeks because we're still in the middle of the Florida Home Theater Tour. There's probably about 20 of these total that we're going to be featuring here on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed and I'll have a playlist right over here with all of the videos that we've done so far. Well, guys, I hope you have an incredible week. God bless and we'll catch you in the next video.